I'm Colin Jordan, and we are here at the Boiler Room, my music mastering studio in Chicago, Illinois. I've been doing this for 10 years now, and I've had this studio for about five. Today I'm going to be showing you some of the mastering equipment that I use here in the studio. This is the Avocet Class A studio controller, and basically what this does is this takes care of the monitoring chain. So anything that we need to listen to in the studio is going to be routed through this guy. This is the remote for the unit. This is the actual unit itself. And it's useful because you can put this in a machine room or, or put it close to your converters and to your amplifier, which luckily in a mastering studio everything's pretty close, so I have it right here. Right here. Uh, the remote controls all the functions of the unit. There are three digital inputs and three analog inputs. I don't use the analog inputs, but I do use all three digital inputs. And how I do that is I'll have an input coming from the workstation that is the mastered signal. Then I will have uh, input two is coming from the workstation and that is the unmastered uh, feed so I can compare back and forth. And my third input is uh, the CD player so that uh, if someone brings in a CD, which I actually recommend that they do, we can listen to it and compare back and forth. One of the useful things about this box is the ability to do offsets. And what that means is Say somebody brings in a CD that's very compressed and very loud, um, but we know we're not going to be able to match that. What I can do is uh, double tap the input switch and then adjust the level of that input. So say I can bring it down 3 dB, for example, and then hit that. So now any time I go to that input, it will be automatically reduced by that amount. So this is really useful for comparing different sources because lots of things can be at different volumes. So that's just a really handy way of getting a solid comparison because if you can't compare two different sources at the same volume, it's pointless because they'll sound totally different. They'll have different amounts of bass due to the Fletcher Munson curves uh, and treble. And so that's uh, an extremely useful thing. One of the things about this unit and Dave Hill is, is one of the first guys to get both the analog and digital side right. Um, there are a few different monitor controllers out there now, but this is the first one that was really serious enough to be used in a mastering studio. Before this, I used a simple digital analog converter with a passive attenuator, uh, which was just basically a switched resistor, and then the amplifier, which was useful, but there were problems. There was a little high frequency attenuation due to cable lengths. This thing is, is active, and I think it really sounds great. I really noticed a big difference in my ability to listen and also work once I got it. It's a great digital analog converter. Uh, I've had a little bit of work done to it, but it does sound excellent. Um, one of the things that's really useful is that it is switched. I don't know if you can hear, but as you go between levels, it's actually... Uh, a switched parameter so that it's not a potentiometer, it's minus 16, minus 17. So therefore when I set it to a certain level and I have my uh, SPL reference meter, I know compared to the hundreds of records that I've listened to how the record I'm working on is going to stack up as far as level goes. Because everybody wants their record to be loud, um, but you want to put it in a nice sweet spot. So this is a great way of, of just having some kind of consistency from session to session, from album to album, so that you know exactly how loud your music is.